Today we're going to take a look at the 2022 Honda Fortrax Foreman EPS 520 4x4. We'll talk about where this ATV fits in the Honda's current model lineup, which hopefully helps you in deciphering Honda's extremely confusing ATV model lineup. Plus, we'll go over some of its specs and features, what changed for this year, and start it up for you too so you can hear what it sounds like. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video and commenting below really helps with YouTube's algorithm when it comes to growing this channel and in return will help me make more videos in the future and I really appreciate the help. Now where does this model fit into Honda's utility ATV lineup? At first it looks simple on Honda's website making you think you only have a few models to choose from but for each model you have multiple model variations except for the Rincon. We won't dive into each model in this video as I'll be doing a video on all of them separately, but let's quickly run through your options. The Recon 250 is the smallest utility ATV and it's only available on two-wheel drive and it starts at $42.99. Then you have the Rancher 420 which has eight different models and they range from $55.99 to $87.99 with both two and four-wheel drive models which helps explain why you have such a spread between them. Then you jump up to the Foreman 520 which has three different models that range from $74.99 up to $89.49. Up next we jump to the Rubicon 520 lineup which has four different models ranging from $87.99 up to $99.99. Then last but not least we have the Rencon 680 at $94.99 that has no options and you better like red too as that's your only color to choose from. And if you're confused by all of the different 2022 Rancher models or the differences between the 2022 Foreman and Rubicon models, I recently knocked out videos on all of those topics that I'll link below and in the top right corner as well. I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into a little more info on this particular model. But first, I want to quickly cover that this unit isn't 100% stock, so we'll go over what accessories were installed, and it'll all be linked below as well. This Foreman has a set of 14-inch MSA, M33 clutch wheels replacing the factory 12-inch steel wheels, and 27 by 10 EFX Moto MTC tires replacing the stock 25-inch Maxxis M975 tires. It also has a worn winch and Honda's aluminum A-arm guards while everything else is stock. Now let's get into the details on this Foreman which is the Foreman EPS and its model ID is TRX 520FM2. What does that mean? Well this model has the manual shift transmission and EPS which is short for electric power steering. When looking at a Model ID, TRX is generic for ATV, and then 520 is the engine size, while F means four-wheel drive, and the M means manual shift, while a 2 means it has power steering. Now I dive deeper into those Model ID explanations in my other Model Lineup Explain videos, and for those that want to geek out on that information, it'll be linked above and below as well. Now this model takes the cheapest manual shift format and adds EPS bringing the MSRP up $700. You now go from $74.99 up to $81.99 for this unit, and your other option in the Foreman lineup without going to the Rubicon bumps you up to $84.49, and that would mean you're swapping out this manual gearbox for the ES electric shift Foreman with EPS. So if you don't want to shift with your foot, just add another $250 into the mix and you're good to go. Now what other options do you have if you've chosen the Foreman EPS? Just colors. And they're the same old, same old with only red, olive, and phantom camo to choose from. And don't forget the camo does bump your price up $500, bringing you to $86.99. Now what did Honda change for 2022 on the Foreman? The only changes come in the way of colors and pricing. All of the Foreman models get the usual red, olive, and phantom camo, except for the Foreman ES EPS model, now has a new harvest beige color to replace olive, and then you have a $100 price increase across the board. And now, let's get into the engine and drivetrain. 
It has a four-stroke 518cc liquid-cooled longitudinally mounted two-valve single-cylinder engine with an overhead valve design. Now keep in mind this is not a high horsepower screamer. You're only looking at around 30 horsepower mark and to some it won't be enough and to others it'll be more than enough. It's plenty enough to get in trouble though and get you up to around the 50 mile per hour mark depending on your weight and the terrain. And with this model you have Honda's semi-automatic manual foot shift. It's a 5 speed plus reverse with neutral bend all the way down and then up through your 5 gears. To engage reverse, all you have to do is pull the little red lever, then the rear brake lever, and now just click down with your foot until you hit reverse. When it comes to maintaining this drivetrain combination, thankfully there's not much to it as you can see here from the maintenance schedule in the owner's manual. Now all Foreman models are going to be four wheel drive and with that you have direct front and rear drive shafts with Honda's Trax lock and locking front differential. And keep in mind, if that locking diff is important to you, you can only get this on the Foreman and Rubicon models. It's super simple to use, come to a complete stop and hit the red button to engage four wheel drive. If regular four wheel drive isn't enough and you need to lock the diff, drop your speed to below 10 miles an hour and flip the black switch up over the red button and now your front diff is locked. And keep in mind your speed is then limited to 20 miles an hour, but you do have a speed override button your starter button and when it's held you can temporarily bump the 20 mile an hour speed limiter up to 40. Now let's get into some info on the chassis and suspension. It has a double cradle steel frame that Honda engineered for an optimal balance of stiffness, compliance, and torsional rigidity. This model has Honda swing arm style rear suspension which is great for towing as tongue weight rests directly on the sprung swing arm. It also helps to minimize body roll and achieves a lower center of gravity when compared to an independent model like the Rubicon. You do have adjustable spring preload settings on all four corners to help you adjust the suspension to match your riding style or for the load you're carrying. The front independent double wishbone suspension brings in 7.28 inches of travel with the rear matching that 7.28 number and then you have 7.5 inches of ground clearance. For brakes, you have dual hydraulic calipers up front with 190mm discs and a single sealed 160mm mechanical drum brake in the rear. You also have fully serviceable axle bearings and front suspension ball joints paired up with this fully enclosed solid rear axle. Now, how much weight can the chassis hold? Well, your towing capacity comes in at 848 pounds and your front racks are rated at 88 pounds and then 176 for the rear. And if you need more than that, check out the Rubicon as all of those numbers go up, but then again, so does the price. And now we'll jump around the foreman and hit on a few different things. You have a pretty basic LCD gauge display on these and it's the same whether you choose a Rancher, Foreman, or Rubicon. The best part about it, other than the usual info and dummy lights, is your maintenance finder system that helps remind you when your next service is due so you don't have to guess. You also have a 50 watt assist light that operates independently of the headlights for additional lighting when needed while still having the ability to turn it off when you don't. Honda's finally starting to make some moves when it comes to storage, better late than never. Honda recently added the front 1.9 liter utility box with a weatherproof cover complementing the little storage spot on the left front fender as well as out back behind the brake light. And now when it comes to accessories, Honda doesn't make as many as some manufacturers do but you still have a few items to choose from. Things like a recoil starter, something that used to come standard but was removed back in 2015. You also have multiple Honda Pro Connect cargo rack options a winch, windscreen, heated grips, protection pieces, and a couple more things. And I'll throw a link down below to where you guys can check out more info on those OEM accessories as well as some aftermarket options too. And now we'll touch on a few numbers before we start it up. This model tips the scales at 646 pounds and that's full of all fluids. You have a 3.9 gallon fuel tank that includes a 1.3 gallon reserve. Your turning radius comes in at 10.5 feet and it has a 50 inch wheelbase while coming in at 47.4 inches wide and it has a 34.2 inch seat height. Now let's start it up and show you guys what it sounds like and then we'll come back here for a few more things.
And that's the 2022 Honda Foreman EPS. All in all, a great ATV, but it's not for everyone. If you're the type of person that wants a fast utility machine, this isn't for you. Honda's made it clear over the decades that they could seemingly care less about getting into a horsepower battle with Can-Am, Polaris, and the rest of them. Do I agree with it? Not really, but I can understand why they might want to skip doing that. However, I would really love to know their thought process behind it all and why they make the decisions they do. Now, if you're on the other side of the fence and going crazy fast isn't what you want and you'd like a plain Jane ATV without a ton of bells and whistles, something that won't need a lot of maintenance and is pretty much bulletproof, this unit is hard to beat. All of the tech on this machine has been in production for well over a decade and has been proven time and time again and pair that up with Honda's resale value on ATVs and it's easy to see why the Foreman is such a popular ATV today. But what do you guys think about it and what do you think Honda needs to change in the near future on the Foreman? And that'll do it for this video guys. Thanks again for all of the support lately. I really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one.